Hi everyone, welcome back to the Alpha of the Eagle channel. Uh, today we're taking a look at the second half of Season 2 for Legend of the Seeker. My name is Matt. My name is the Mother Confessor. Yes, we have uh, the Mother Confessor <laughs> with us today on the channel. That's your surprise! Woo! Um, you can find us both on Instagram. I'm the Dice Shucker. Oh, Board Game Librarian. And uh, like I said, today we are going to be going through the final bit of Legend of the Seeker. We're going to get our hood up. Yeah. There we go. All right, now we're ready to go. We're scary looking. So, oh, we're, God. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to be talking kind of about two things uh, in this one. We're going to be talking about the episodes like we usually do. But then I think what we're going to do is talk about our reaction to the show and season kind of in one and we'll be mentioning a few things about the show's untimely ending at the end of the video how long is this video gonna be how, how are we gonna keep these poor people watching us oh uh, here we go are you ready everybody <laughs> so uh, we went through the first uh, did we do this one here okay so the first episode we're going to talk about is called hunger uh kara is killed in the line of duty and decides to take the deal to become a Baneling. Uh, and Zed's brother meets up with the infamous map maker from the first season um, to sell Shadow Water. Now, Shadow Water, what it can do is it can cure uh, Banelings. And you won't have to be a Baneling anymore. Um, and they water it down considerably so they can make more money off of it. And when Richard, Kalen, Zed, and Kara find out about this, they go to get the cure so they can give it to Banelings and maybe find out if that's a way that they could end this whole thing deeper. Of course, this goes right into the story with Kara, and then they have to find the source of the Shadow Water. So what did you think of Hunger? We watched it a couple of nights ago, and good. Good, because I think it adds... I don't know why I think it adds. What do you think it adds? Uh, you get a bit more, uh, like we had uh, an episode back at the beginning of the season about Kara's backstory, and this season definitely puts a lot of focus on her character. This one gave it a little bit more. Kind of the, the reason she became a Baneling was because she had information that Richard and Kaylin needed. And so her service to Richard and her devotion to, to Richard and the Lord Raw uh, forces her to kind of take the deal so that the information can get back uh, the right people. And so that's kind of interesting to kind of see how the the lengths that she'll go um, for Richard. Any other thoughts? Oh, the brother. The brother is. Oh, Zed's brother. Yeah, Zed's brother. So second person, third, second third one. Mm. And he, oh man, he's kind of like a bad version of Jen. I don't know, not a bad version of Jensen, but just a different. Or, like, I don't care for him. Yeah, I, I think it actually gives something to Zed's character. The reason why Zed is you Just to kind of see the interaction okay. between each other. Uh, Benson's just... Oh, boy. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it was a good episode. Not much more to say. Because the next episode is really, really fun. Oh, yeah. So the next episode <laughs> is called Princess. Hey. Where Kaylin is captured uh, by Gars, and this, the guy that ordered her capture by the Gars, she's brought to this castle, is making a deal with the Sisters of the Dark, in particular Sister Nikki, brought back from the dead. Um, and if uh, when the Keeper wins, the guy who captured Kaylin uh, will be able to live forever. And the reason he's giving Kaylin up is because of the prophecy that as long as the Mother Confessor's heart beats pure, the Keeper can never, never win. And so he decides that if he gives up the Mother Confessor, the Keeper will allow him to live forever. The only problem is Richard, Kara, and Zed go to uh, save her, and they dress Kara up as a princess um, for the hand of this uh, gentleman who's looking for a new wife. And everything that is it, it's just the women, right? The court. Every Again, we rewatched this one a couple of nights ago, and we just laugh out loud funny mm. because it's so awkward and it's so against Kara's character to be this 
pretty, pretty princess. Um, so they tap into her abilities as a fighter, as a soldier, as a hunter. Uh, it's really funny. Uh, Zed is dressed as a woman. He is oh, the yeah. dowager aunt, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Richard is also this ladies' man. Uh, and all the women are swooning over him. And he's trying to find a way to express his talent. To be mentioned too that while they're in the castle, no one's magical abilities work. So Zed's magic doesn't work. Kara's or Sith's magic doesn't mm-hmm. work. Kalen's professor abilities doesn't work. Don't work. Um, I, don't, I don't think the magic of the sword would work either. So it's kind of interesting too that when the Sisters of the Dark do come into um, uh, the castle, they can't actually use their abilities. You get to actually see them fight without magic. Yeah. Kind of interesting. Yeah, it's a much more even fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, Richard has some ridiculous hair. It's this, oh god, totally like... They bleached it. Cause... 90s bleached bad hair. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. That was, it was, there was a funny storyline going on with Richard, too, with uh, the king's, or the prince's sister. The, yeah, that's right. Um, And nice, what I like about so many of these episodes is that you finally get, and not that this woman is a phenomenal actress by any point, Um, you see a lot of Kara. Hmm. And Kara's story, and that it's not just the Richard and Kalen show, which right. is fine. It's what but, the first season was going to be after a while. Yeah. Then we have the next episode called The Town. Uh, as you heard me say, Sister Nikki has been brought back from the dead. And they are, uh, she is trying to find a way to get uh, the Stone of Tears to give to the Keeper, because um, the Sisters of the Dark serve the Keeper. So, keeping in line with the prophecy of as long as the Mother Confessor's heart beats pure, the Keeper can't win, um, Sister Nikki puts something called a maternity spell on Kalen. Now, everything that happens to Sister Nikki happens to Kalen, which lends for some interesting moments uh, throughout the episode. Uh, those who uh, went through the Sword of Truth series with me, the books, this one is more most closely resemblant to Faith of the Fallen. Not completely, but basically Nikki comes and takes... Richard away, because Richard has the compass to the Stone of Tears. Uh, <laughs> and so Nikki's going to use Richard and the compass to get to the Stone of Tears, and then she's going to release the maternity spell on Kalen. However, Zed has a way to get rid of the maternity spell, which involves finding something from Kalen's past, uh, mainly her mother, because that's the only way to break it, and Kalen has to go find her father, who she doesn't have the best relationship with. Uh, so what do you think of Bound? I think this was actually a very good episode that kind of tapped into not only the source material, but we got some more Kalen backstory that was strong. You heard our criticism in the last video that in season one, the Kalen backstory episodes were very weak. Um, you had uh, Torn in the last video we talked about where you learned more about her authority. And this one you learned about her father, mm. which... And you got to see her mother in a spirit form, too. You kind of get to see the toll that it takes on men when they become confessed. Because they're going through some of the things and Kalen's father comes upon this sculpture of the woman he was supposed to marry. Mm-hmm. But his father told him he wanted him to serve in the army and then he became confessed. And so he never actually got to marry the woman he wanted to. Um, because of confessors. I don't agree with what her father did. No. Um, no but you got to see kind of the other side of that coin too, halfway through the episode. A very strong episode for you because it so strongly resembles the source material. That, right. Um, for a show that's notorious of not paying attention at all to its source material, this one was very strong. Uh, now, granted, like I said before, it's not exactly what happens in Faith of the Fallen, but at least it's Sister Nikki's the one that puts the maternity spell on Kalen, takes Richard away, and Kalen and Kara and Zed have to kind of figure things out for themselves. Um, and that's that's a very broad um, definition of Faith of the Fallen. So at least they paid attention in that regard. And it gave us a chance to get to, not get to know Sister Nikki, but to observe her as a villain, because that's all we're ever going to see her as in the show is a villain. Okay, since you guys have been here, we're going to have several times, 
Is it really your favorite character? Mm -hmm. um, the only person the story she shared was Richard about her background. Again, I said to you, I wasn't sure if it was complicated. Was she going to play on Richard's sympathies? It was um, still interesting. Yeah, and believable. Believable. Um, and, and certainly the lens that Sister Nikki will go to um, in general. Mm. And how strong she is. She's so yeah. strong. Oh, God. Yeah. Um. Powerful, yeah. like man. So I mean, it's an episode we would recommend. It is an yeah. episode that pairs very well with its predecessor. We had a fun time. The princess and bound was a nice way for the series to take a serious tone again. Let's head into the next episode, which we skipped upon rewatching because when I explained it to you, you were like, "Okay, yeah, this one is." Um, the general synopsis is. Um, a woman appears in a small, remote village, claiming to be the creator and tries to kind of cast people against the Seeker by claiming that the only reason the Keeper broke free, or is trying to break free, is because of the Seeker's violent ways. This is kind of a, a sign to most shows that your show is about to die, and this is what we call the, um, the sequence episode, I guess. There's another word for it, it's not coming to me, where you're using clips from episodes previous throughout the whole episode to kind of um, make a point. It's To me, this was an episode that was created to save time to try to save the show, so they didn't have to film anything while they were uh, negotiating for it to be kept on the air. This is, without a doubt, one of the worst episodes in the series. It's right up there with the Male Confessor episode. Uh, I don't know. Do you remember this one at all? I learned a lot in this episode about... The, crea the actual creator, well, in this universe, the creator and the keeper and how they have been lovers at some one point, or there was something that had gone on with them. I don't remember exactly. What I what did stand out to me, though, was that this was just an episode that used clips from the previous episodes the whole time through. Yeah, I, I, that's because I'm not sure in any other episode that they allude to possible at the beginning of time relationship that the keeper and the creator had. Mm. I think it's in this episode. Yeah. So uh sorry that we didn't get a chance to watch it. Things have been a little hectic this week. We watched uh, a handful, but this was one we skipped mainly because like I said, we knew that there wasn't much to this episode. It's my fault. Why would you say that? <laughs> it's not your fault, it's our fault. Sorry everybody. We'll come back to it someday. Uh, the next episode is called Desecrated. Uh, they throw Richard a birthday party in a town, and a magician puts on a show. Uh, that's not Zed. It's a magician that's not Zed. However, um, in the war against Ahara, this uh, town was using a lottery-based system to um, draft soldiers. And this guy discovered that his son's draft... Uh, lottery tokens were heavier. And you learn this throughout the show, but basically he tells Richard, uh, sorry, let me back up a little bit. He puts Kara and Kaelin in a sealed tomb somewhere by using magic. And they only have one day left of air. And he says to Richard, if you kill the people that purposely, well, not to their knowledge, avoided the lottery, then I will bring Kaelin and Kara back. And you get to see a lot of the relationship between Kaelin and Kara. And Richard has these puzzles to figure out over where they could be. Do you remember this one? I had rewatched it previously uh, in the past week. It's an okay episode. Once again, this isn't a feeling. This is another one that feels like they knew they were going to get canceled. All right. So I'm sorry about this, everybody. This is our cat. Yes. Um, so this, to me, was another sign of the show knew it was being canceled and they were just kind of churning out the required amount of episodes that they, they needed. It also really has nothing to do with the storyline as a whole. This is right. episode, I'm looking over here, 16, 16 out of 22. 22. 
and has nothing to do with the Stone of Tears, correct? The only thing it has to do with the Stone of Tears is that if, is if Kalen dies, then the Keeper wins. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of important that, yeah, they do this. Two. All right. So the next episode. Uh, the next episode is kind of interesting, and I, I really did enjoy this one. We didn't watch it again, but it's called Vengeance. Uh, we find out that Panis Rall is actually alive, that he faked his death, um, and he is a, he's John Reese davies in this episode. He's put oh, his yeah. body into, uh, he's put his soul into another body, and John Reese davies or Panis Rall, has the key to um, finding a scroll that can tell them what to do with the Stone of Tears when they finally get it. Uh, however, Panis Rall killed Zed's father. And once, uh, this is another one where Zed's brother comes into the mix. And Zed's brother is approached by Dark and Rall in, in a fire image. And um, then Zed's brother tells Zed, hey, we got an opportunity to go kill um, the guy, go kill Panis Rall. And the storylines kind of intersect. Richard, Kalen, and Kara end up meeting uh, Panis Rall in the woods, and they all do eventually kind of help each other to find the scroll in the end, but the Sisters of the Dark end up killing uh, Panis Rall, uh, mainly because Dark and Rall, who was still working for the Keeper at this point, tells them to. Do you remember this one? He was very good in this oh, episode. It's a shame that it was only one episode that he was in. Yeah. They say Shannara in the show, so yeah. it's Shannara. Yeah. We have. <laughs> anyway. He was good on that show, but he was like one of the few saving graces of it. Yeah. Sorry, sorry looking around. Yeah, I vaguely remember this episode. This might be the scene that I feel I'm grossly the most of, and I don't remember the time I saw it. It was one of those parts of the show. Um, yeah, a very contem contemplative Panis Rall we have, I mm. think, right? He's very much interested in spending time with Richard, because he never really got a chance to know Richard as soon as Richard was born in Brennan, according to the show. Uh, mm. Richard was taken uh, beyond the boundary. Um, so you kind of get to see Panis Raw kind of bask in the glory of his son. Um, you can get to see a, a reflection of someone who knew that he did terrible things. When Zed and his brother finally meet up with them, there is this very nice forgiveness moment mm -hmm. that the three of them have. And you get to see a lot of the backstory of Zed as a young wizard again. Okay. Yeah. So... I, I really enjoyed this episode. I, I highly recommend it. If you're going to watch one um, that helps with the helps with the plot, this is one of them. Yeah, I'll probably end up going back. I'll probably end up going back and watching it. Um, well, when I watched it again, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was it was one of the better episodes of the season. Yeah, but that's because you get so much um, world not world building, but just character development. was um Richard's father? Yeah. Yeah. And Panis is the grandfather. Yeah. Um okay, so the next episode we have is Walter. Walter is kind of a half and half episode and it's an episode that never feels like it's going to end. And that's not a bad thing. Um we find out that Dark and Rawl had a body double and they trained him very hard to uh resemble Dark and Rawl, but as soon as Rawl was killed, this guy was basically chased out of everything, attempted to be killed, and the, the soldier that was protecting him, they kind of sep separated, and they meet back up, and they try to steal a treasure from a Mord Sith fortress, because he looks like Dark and Rawl, and the soldier that protected him meets back up with them, and um, they almost trick him if it wasn't for all oh, the, the General Egermont is his name, Rawl's number one, basically. Number ones just Raw have. That's the big one. <laughs> because I feel like in all of these episodes we see, oh, I was Raw's number one. Yeah. I was Raw's number one. That kind of also goes to show the culture that Raw created. That just placed 
such strong and self-importance to each of these people that they all thought they were the most important thing to Raw. I guess so, because the, to me, the number one was always the guy from season one. The guy with the mustache? Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy in this episode. He comes, they, the Mord since they were just transporting uh, Lord Raw and his treasure, and the guy's like, Lord Raw's dead. That's not him. Oh, the same guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so... Mm. Eventually, what happens in this episode is Dark and Raw really wants to get out of the underworld. And so they use the Sister of the Dark and Amored Sith to kill Walter. They put his spirit in someone else's body, and then Dark and Raw's spirit goes into Walter's body. So it's kind of a way of bringing Craig Parker back from the dead. And then, of course, they realize that Raw's going to team up with the company, Richard, Kalen, Zed, and Kara, because he wants to stay alive. Excuse me, he yeah. doesn't want to work for the Keeper. It's a very weird episode. It is. It has a lot going on, and it's uh, it feels like a much longer episode than it actually is. Yeah. Which, uh, the next, the, this is, that's kind of like a part one to our part two. Now, what happens is Dark and Raw and Richard have the scroll that tells them what to do with the Stone of Tears. And Raw's like, oh, I'll never tell. Oh, sorry, no, they, they have to actually go to the Garden of Night Wisps, because that's the only way you can read the scroll. Now, Raul is in possession of the scroll, so he goes ahead and he decides that he's going to burn down um, the area of the Night Wisps, and then only he knows how to save the world. And, of course, after um, he reads it with the Night Wisp, the one he saved, he burns the scroll. So now he officially knows 100% how to save the world. Kalen goes nuts because Confessors and the Night Wisps, they have a connection. And then Kalen and Kara are sent off in their own direction to uh, allow the one remaining Night Wisp, who happens to uh, be with child, to go give birth. They have to have a certain place to go give birth. Now, Zed comes up with an idea. There is a way to find out what the scroll said. And you're going to love this. We have to find that listener from season one. No! The kid. <laughs> gosh, no, I to read Raul's mind. I, uh, I, I had a chance to watch this episode today. Um, and the kid's actually not as bad in this episode than he was in the original. No, he Mm. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Bad uh, nightmare, right? What do, do you what do you remember of this episode and did you like it? I should have a connection with them either, but maybe the dress. It's the dress. The dress. Um Yeah, it's terrible. And Ross stinker. I was gonna say something. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. How do you feel about this episode? So one of the things that stuck out to me because I watched it again today was Raul tells us a lot of things. First off, that his power when he was learning magic had reached a cap and he couldn't learn anything new. So he made a deal with the Keeper to learn more. And we actually find out on this episode that Dark and Raul was the first Baneling. Uh, and he made a deal with the Keeper, and then all the people that died in his war were basically because he needed to kill people to stay alive. Um, and now that his soul's out and in a different body, and he can't be taken back due to the deal, um, he actually tells Richard, for once, I kind of wanted everyone to remember me, not for the evil tyrant, but for the man who saved the world. No, because they bring the listener in, the listener reads Raul's mind. Raul almost dies in this episode uh, because it, uh, a Dakra is thrown at him by Sister of the Dark, and it's kind of draining his body. Yeah. But Zed heals him, and then Raul finds a way to kind of split off and go his merry way. Do what he does. wants, because it's it's Dark and Raul. Yeah. Is this no. <laughs> this has everything to do with trying to wrap up the show in the last four episodes. Hmm. Um, so any other thoughts on the episodes called Extinction, by the way? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 
um, it gives birth. It's all these cute little night roasts. Uh, okay. So we go next to episode 20 called Eternity. Uh, we finally discover the Stone of Tears. It's in this magical veil, and Richard and Kaylin are the only ones there, and the people who are guarding the Stone of Tears have been there since creation and have been waiting for Richard and Kaylin to show up, and they can never leave because they're not allowed to take the Stone of Tears out. Because what's going to happen instead is that um, they're going to wait until the world is over, and then Richard and Kaylin can start uh, the world again, the two of them, yeah. with them. Right. Plot hole. Well, they, they aren't aware. Of... <laughs> but anyway, the other reason is because they, they know the prophecy that Richard is supposed to be in the Stone of Tears to the Keeper himself. So that's why they also want the Stone of Tears in order to remove the veil. At the same time, we find out that another Mord Sith uh, comes and finds Kara and says, Hey, we found your son. Because Kara had a son with Dark and Raw, as he most likely did with many of the other Mord Sith. Um, but it's all a ruse to be captured again and be trained once again by Dark and Rawl, and Kar is broken. Um, and when Zed is given the Stone of Tears, because they're trapped in this veil, so they're trying to find other magical ways to get out, Richard sends the Stone of Tears through some sort of spell through the barrier, and then he can make it through, him and Kaelin can make it through the barrier, and then Kara tortures Zed and steals the Stone of Tears, bringing it to Rawl. What do you remember of this episode? Did you like it? Yeah, it's basically it's basically ending and the ending story kind of waning down. About Kara. Mm-hmm. Because she's retrained and into the forever clothes. <laughs> <laughs> um the methods used to get her back are really skinny. And slides this woman that Kara may likely have had a relationship with. Oh, definitely. Um, you're definitely preying on that. Uh, you kind of feel bad for Kara. And she, uh, at first, when they're retraining her, she's not breaking at all. No. Um, but what Raul does is he creates a temporary alliance with the Sisters of the Dark. And the Sisters of the Dark imbue Kara's Ajil with all the souls she's killed and tortured throughout, and then they use that on Kara, and that is really quick on breaking her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember much about the getting the Stone of Tears other than the... They couldn't leave? Yeah. Yeah. They find a way to get out, eventually. So the next episode's weird. The next episode is good, but weird. So it's called, sorry everybody, my phone locked on me, Unbroken. This episode is basically uh, Richard, Kalen, and Zed are going to try to find a way to undo the training that Carr went through uh, with Raul recently. Zed casts the spell, and things change. Uh, this kind of reminds me a lot of the season one finale. Um, Richard has successfully been confessed while putting the boxes of Warden together. Um, so he's technically confessed. Uh, so he also has Dark and Rawl under his control. Uh, they, uh, Zed kind of wakes up in this wedding ceremony of Richard and Kaelin. Uh, and Richard is officially Lord Rawl over the Midlands. Not Midlands and Dahara, sorry. And uh, we do get some Jensen in this episode, but it's not a heck of a lot. Um, and Kara is nowhere to be found. Uh, we find out that Kara is not a Mord Sith. In fact, she's living a very happy life with Leo, the other seeker, when Richard went to wizard school. So, what do you think? What do you think? What do I think? What I do you think? <laughs> um, this is not as strong of a time travel episode as season one's. It's okay, but it's really part one of the finale. It is kind of sad. It's really sad. I got, I got really upset. Well, this is... 
Go ahead. More specifically, <laughs> that Kara is happy mm. that she and Leo have this happy life. And does Leo end up dying in this episode again? So. All so, over again? So what basically happens is uh, the Sisters of the Dark are ordered by the Keeper to undo the Power of Orion because even the Keeper knows something changed when Zed cast that spell. Um, and so the Sisters <laughs> of the Dark, they go and they take apart the boxes of Orden, and, and Dark and Rawl knows now, now's my chance, and he actually enslaves Richard again. So Kaelin and Zed notice mm. this, and they escape the People's Palace before they're killed. And Zed's like, I can undo this, but it would mean tearing Kara away from what what was happening to her. Mm. Jensen dies in this episode, too. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> right but uh no i mean there's yeah jensen dies i think leo dies um a lot happens in this one and and yet it's sad to see that in order to fix everything they have to destroy Kara's happiness <laughs> i don't know it's, it's not like a Kara really most happy when she's serving Richard, working with Richard? You don't know. I don't know. Well, by the end of it, uh, Zed has, is starting to do the spell again, and a Mord Sith shoots Kara and kills her anyway. So Kara is dead by the end of the episode. Alive. No, they use a captured Mord Sith to undo everything. Which we're getting into the next episode called Tears. Uh, which is the actual finale. The only way to get back to where th what they were doing was if they use a con uh, not confessed Mord Sith, but a Mord Sith to use the spell to transport them back. So Kara is officially dead in the other world, and Zed and Kaelin are able to switch everything back around. Because it needs to be convenient, because there's no more episodes. <laughs> we have to wrap everything up. Because when we get back to everything that was happening, Kara's loyal to Richard again. Because if everything was normal, she would still be loyal to Dark and Raw. But we ran out of time, so we have to just make her loyal to Richard again for the sake of the episode. Yeah. What do you remember of the uh, finale? Well, uh, <laughs> it starts off pretty slow, doesn't it? Yeah, but there's like five different things happening, and you're like, okay, there's no way in 40 minutes. Like, the first time we watched it, I'm like, this had to have ended on a cliffhanger. Oh, yeah, the last 10 minutes are like, woo! We get Sister Nikki back, but she's dressed yeah. in black, so she's Death's mistress now. So those of you, they didn't actually say it in the, in the episode, but those who read the book know that Nikki's black dress means Death's mistress is here. And she tries to electrocute Raul in the tub. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so much stuff happens in tubs and in water. Scary. Mm -hmm. Water scary? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the ending is just really sad, happy. It's random. Random. So little kid. Kid actor, we got a kid actor again. He's actually not as bad. No, he's not as bad. But um, the, the kid actor is playing the keeper, possessing a young boy. Uh, is that Carl's son? No. No. I don't even remember. Car oh, by the way, Carl's son was killed. They lie to the Mord Sith and say that they serve in the Dragon Corps, but really what happens is Raul usually kills the babies as soon as they're out of the room with the mother. So, everyone's lied to. And so... <laughs> So what happens is Richard, Kalen, Zed, and Kara are trying to make it to the Pillars of Creation. Um, the Keeper finds out where they are, and he opens this rift in a bunch of sand. And Richard, in glorious Richard fashion, does a slow-motion jump over the breach before it gets too wide. And of course, he makes it all by himself, while the rest of them don't. And then, as Richard is moving forward, uh, Sister Nikki comes around, and she fakes being wounded by Kara. The car uses uh, a bow on her, I think. I can't quite remember. 
And Palin's like, let me confess her. Let me conforce her to use her powers to help us. Because that was going to ignite Nikki's body on fire. And Kaylin goes and sneakily, Nikki absorbs some of Kaylin's Han and confesses Kaylin. So, I don't, I don't think it could have even happened. I don't think so. Um, no, I don't. Right. And keep that in mind because for the sake of the episode, we're going to throw things around in a big circle and make things a little confusing for you. So Richard comes across the child, who's the keeper, and of course he trusts the kid because it's Richard. Um, it's when, really his fault, I think. Yeah. He's too trusting. Kara and Zed say, if we kill Sister Nikki, uh, Kaylin will be broken from the Confessor spell and be normal again. So they corner... Uh, Nikki and Kaylin in this town after Sister Nikki has blinded Richard with the shards of glass. Uh, now Richard mm -hmm. can't see and he's being led along by this child. Uh, Kara shoots Sister Nikki. It's unclear. It's either right in the back or through the throat. It's weird. It, you can't really see it on the episode. And in a moment when you think, okay, Nikki's dead. Kaylin's going to be broken. Instead, Kaylin goes into the Condar. It starts ordering everyone to kill each other because she's confessed and is now confessing everyone else. Confess or be confessed? Right. So here's the loop. Well, here's here's, yeah. here's the loop that they're throwing you through. Well, Kaylin's not broken a confession because Sister Nikki used Kaylin's magic to confess Kaylin. So technically, Kaylin is confessed by Kaylin. The only way to fix this is to kill Kaylin, bring her back with the breath of life, and she'll be fine. Right. You got that, folks? Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. It sounds ridiculous. It's, it sounds utterly ridiculous. It's basically, it's ridiculous. we're not getting any more episodes. Let's make this as epic as we can. It is pretty epic. It is. I'll give it that. Ridiculous. But ridiculous. Uh, eventually, Kalen comes upon Richard. Richard's blind. He And Kalen's going to be attacked by the Sisters of the Dark because they're still trying to kill her because of the prophecy. But even then, that's a plot hole because they said as long as the mother confessor's heart beats true. Well, I'm sorry. She's been confessed by herself. It doesn't beat true anymore. <laughs> um, and so Richard, he's blind, but he's going to fight technically as the seeker. Remember, he can do stuff like that. So he gives the stone of tears to the kid and says, put this in the pillars of the creation before the world ends. And of course, the kid is the keeper and he takes it down to the underworld. And after the fight scene in wonderful slow motion, um, Kaylin asks, tries to confess Richard and asks, actually asks him, why aren't you doing what I tell you? Um, and then Richard says he gave the stone to, to the kid to go put into the Pillars of Creation. And she says that's the keeper and gets angry. And Kaylin kills Richard because she's still in blood rage at this point. And... No, I have a feeling that that really was the end, and if there was a season three, that was going to be the cliffhanger. What ends up happening is Kaylin, realizing what she's done, comes out of confession suddenly, and um, Kara comes by, gives Richard the breath of life. While Kaylin is crying, a new stone of tears is created from her tears. Yes, and so they race this new stone of tears up, which is still blind, by the way, um, and put it in the pillars of creation. Now, because everything has to end happy, Zed fixes Richard's eyes, and uh, everyone's happy and kissy and smoochy in the end of the show. That's it, folks. What you think of this episode? <laughs> Until the end. <laughs> Oh, so Mortith bring Nikki back to life. Rawl has put a Radahan on Nikki so she can't use her powers. And he's like, you're going to serve me now. So that would have been interesting to see in a season three what that, happens when Nikki has to serve Rawl. That really would have been. 
bad. Yeah, we'll never know. Yeah. Unless you completely wipe the show from your mind and read the book. Then you'll know. Yeah, you'll only be more <laughs> shocked with the book somehow, Nikki, turns out. Um, mostly like it. I don't know. I mean, I'm not... I didn't hate... I mean, what I hated about the episode is, is the very end. It just seemed so out of line, and it was just, we need to make this a happy ending, because no one's going to get a happy ending, really. Yeah. Um, we're all out of a job now. Though most of these people went to go work on Spartacus, which is a fun game if you ever, like, watch Spartacus after watching Legend of the Seeker and start pointing people out. <laughs> like, hey, that one was in this episode. Except for the main four. Except for the, the main, main four. four. go off and do other things. Yep. Um... So what did you think of season two as a whole? Stronger? Right. I thought the more same. More cohesive. Better more... fight choreography. <laughs> you don't think so? <laughs> How is that like? I guess so. It is. It but is. It's not like. But there wasn't much to compare in the first place. All right. That can't... That's like the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. I. Right. No, cool. I, I still got the, the, the music in the back. Oh, it's background. still cheesy. cheesy it's still music. cheesy, but the fighting is better than it is in season two. Um, because a lot yeah. of times it feels like in season one, the hard soldiers were just standing there with the sword, going, oh, 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 and then they're yeah, just getting Yeah, it's much through. more. Um, I love the addition of Kara. I love the addition of Jiggy. I love the boss back. <laughs> um, that you can evolve in different ways. <laughs> Um, I was concerned at the end of season one. I'm like, oh, no more Craig Parker. But then they found ways to bring him back, and I was like, there we go. That's good. <laughs> yeah, overall, and there's fewer filler episodes. Right. Which is nice. Right. Which is really nice. This, this season felt more like it had a an arc, and there was only a handful of filler. <laughs> so, what do you think of the show as a whole? It was probably from Costas last time. What? I should answer everything for everyone, shouldn't it? Um, uh, I don't love it as much as you do, that's for sure. Um, especially for the fact, sorry, the cats are like meow and that you can't do anything about their wet food. <laughs> Dad, mommy, and daddy. Um, I, I only read the one book, so you read all of them. Um, you rewatch the episodes all the time. Folks. Specific episodes. All the time. Specific episodes. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Um, whereas, you know, they'll be talking about coming home from work and I'll be like, you're watching See Her Again? I'm not a rewatcher though, so that's right. yeah. that's just me and my personality. Um, <laughs> it's like, you know, everyone has their cheesy thing that they like. And this is ours. Yeah. This is something and that we'll watch together, too. Like, my personal cheesy thing of recent is Rain. I'm trying to get Matt to watch Rain because if he can stick through it, Craig Parker's in there. He is. <laughs> and if he can get past the, the emo music and the weird costumes, it's yeah. not so bad. Um... Again, the same kind of barrier of entry with Seeker, too. Cheesy music. <laughs> Can't be. What do you think? Um, I always tell people the same thing. If you're going to watch Seeker, you really have to just get through the first few episodes. Um, because the show really does hit its stride. With the... What? Uh, <laughs> The show opens well, and then it has a boatload of filler, and then the good stuff comes. So if you can stick with it, because the sad thing is a lot of that filler you can't really uh, skip, because it does have some good character growth to it. Otherwise, you're in you're in for a good ride. Because I always tell people, keep in mind this is pre Game of Thrones, this is pre Game of Thrones high fantasy on television. So. It actually doesn't do that bad for keeping that in mind. Well, so, so, go ahead. In terms of keeping beat. No, I'm not bad. No. 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 Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the show's cancellation. 
Um, the show wasn't canceled purely for the fact that the company claimed it had low ratings. Now, it may not have had the ratings the company wanted, but the reason that Seeker was canceled was because the main production company in New Zealand it was being funded by went out of business. Uh, Disney, the ABC Corporation, didn't want to pick up uh, anything. They tried to sell the show to Sci-Fi, I believe. Uh, Sci-Fi didn't want it. Uh, believe it or not, from what I understand and in my research, Craig Horner was actually one of the big proponents of trying to get the show renewed for a season three. He was the one going to a lot of these meetings, not many of the other cast. So um, after a lot of hard work, it was just, it was going to end. And I think that's why the second half of season two feels the way it does. Um, in between certain episodes, it feels like there were two or three episodes we missed. Um, so... Cat I'm sorry, we had a crazy cat just <laughs> running the room. They really want their food. <laughs> so, uh, that is our review of Legend of the Seeker, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed uh, what we've gone through. If you have any questions on the episodes, please do uh, write me a comment and I can see what I can do to answer or Jen can answer. We've tried to fix our microphone problems this time, and too. I'm talking directly, too. Right. Which I don't like doing because that means I have to look at no. Um. So hopefully that fixed it. I'm a librarian by trade too, so it's taking all the work from me. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Um, next time I don't know next the next time we're gonna have a fantasy series because oh boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not reading the Shannara books, so you just um, take me over the show, I guess. You could. Uh, I'll definitely let you guys know next time when we're doing uh, a review on a television show. So we could do Black Cauldron, the movie. Yes, we could. Okay. All right. It's a we'll plan. See you next time, everybody. Bye.